Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I've got two nice problems to look at involving the collision of a bullet with a door or something attached to a hinge at the top. All right, in the first case, what I'm gonna assume is that that bullet's traveling really fast. It's going to hit the door and get lodged inside and then everything is going to have, it's gonna start swinging upward. Um, I wanna calculate what is the final angular velocity after that collision. What principles do I have to apply in order to solve this problem? Can I use linear momentum? Can I use angular momentum? Let's have a look at uh, how we solve a problem like this. Uh, in case number two, I'm just gonna take a slightly different variation of this problem. And what we're going to do is we're gonna assume that the bullet doesn't get stuck. It's traveling fast enough that it penetrates right through. And then after it's still traveling to the right with um, some final velocity. In this case, it'll be 100 meters per second. All right, but that means the door is still going to swing with some final angular velocity. How would I calculate in this case versus the other case? I also want to look at energy in both of these cases, the initial energy of the system and the final energy of the system and compare the two. These are inelastic collisions, so we expect that the energy is not the same before and after, but let's do the calculation. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. That's the best way to support me. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, we wanna calculate the final angular velocity for case number one here. So we have an incoming bullet, it's going to get stuck in the door and then everything, the bullet and the door are going to swing up at some angular velocity omega f. I've given some other parameters here. So we have the mass of the bullet, that's a small mass. However, it's traveling really fast, 400 meters per second. Its mass is only 10 grams. It's going to get lodged inside this bullet that, uh, inside the door rather, that has a mass of 15 kilograms. And I've given you some dimensions here for the length of this door and also where the bullet is going to strike. In this case, I'm gonna call this X and I'm just gonna assume that it's going to hit the midpoint. All right, now, how do we solve a problem like this? So uh, one thing you have to do is you have to think about which quantity is conserved. So first of all, we're going to have a system, okay? And our system is made up of what? It's made up of the door plus the bullet, okay? Now, we have two things we might be able to use, right? We wanna see, do we have conservation of which quantities? Uh, the first one you might think of is conservation of linear momentum. Can I use conservation of linear momentum for this problem? Well, think about when you have conservation of linear momentum. You can only have conservation of linear momentum if there is no external force acting on the system. Uh, no external force. Well, let's think about all the forces acting on this system. So the system is made up of the door and the bullet. So you're gonna have a force on the bullet, right? The force on the bullet is going to act this way to slow it down. Okay, what else are we gonna have? Uh, you're also going to have a force on the door. The force on the door is going to act this way. Those forces will be equal and opposite, so that's okay. In, if these were the only two forces acting on it, I could use conservation of linear momentum. However, there is going to be something else going on here. Look, at there is a pivot here, and when the bullet strikes the door, there is also going to be some force of the pivot uh, acting on the door. So this here is an external force. And if you have an external force, forget about using conservation of linear momentum. I don't know what that force is and I'm not even trying to calculate it, but that is the deal breaker for conservation of linear momentum. So the answer right here is no, we cannot use this. Uh, the other quantity that you might be thinking of now since it involves some angular rotation is this quantity called angular momentum of the system. Again, the system is made up of uh, the bullet and the door. Now, even though we have some force here acting on the door from the pivot, uh, guess what? If I define this point as being the pivot, this force here does not produce any torque on the system, okay? Uh, the only forces that produce torque on the system are these action-reaction pairs from the bullet and the door, okay? So as long as I define the pivot here and I'm going to define uh, all of my angular momentum quantities relative to this point, since this force does not produce any torque, the angular momentum of the system initially has to be equal to the total angular momentum after this collision. So this is the principle that we're going to apply to solve this problem. All right, let's get started now.
All right, so this is the principle we're applying now, conservation of angular momentum about this axis, because whatever force is acting at the pivot does not produce torque. So let's consider what we have before the collision. Before the collision, we have this bullet that is moving. So this bullet here, I'm gonna call it the angular momentum of the bullet, I'll just call it lowercase b, and this is going to be the initial angular momentum of that bullet. Now, how would you calculate it? Again, if you look at the position of the bullet right before it hits, it's moving to the right like this, and the distance to the pivot is 0.5 meters. I'm calling that value x. So the way you calculate angular momentum is, again, as a vector quantity, it's r cross p, okay? And the way you calculate the magnitude of that vector, it's the distance to the pivot multiplied by the linear momentum multiplied by sine of the angle between both of those. Uh, in this case, sine of the angle is 90 degrees. So we don't have to worry about that term. All right, so the distance to the pivot now is simply the value I call x. The mass of the bullet is mb. And the velocity of the bullet is vb, and I'm going to call it the initial. All right, so this is the total angular momentum of the bullet, at least the magnitude of it. And let me just rearrange this, mb vb initial multiplied by x. Let's go ahead and highlight this quantity. I can actually get a number for this, right? Because I know all the values. So let's actually go ahead and calculate it. Mass of the bullet was 10 grams. Convert that to kilograms, 0 0.01. The initial velocity of the bullet is 400 meters per second, 400. And multiplied by x, x is the distance to the pivot. This is 0 0.5. Uh, so this quantity, the initial angular momentum of the bullet about this point is, calculate that, I think you get 20. This is measured in kilograms uh, meters squared per second. Okay, let's go ahead and highlight that value. All right, so let's go back to our equation, our equation one here. The angular momentum initial of the system, it's only the bullet that has angular momentum. What is the final angular momentum of the system? So let's focus on this quantity here. So this would be the angular momentum of the bullet, final, plus the angular momentum of the door, right? The door is now going to be moving. So how do we calculate this? Um, one way I can calculate the angular momentum of the bullet is to consider um, its moment of inertia multiplied by the angular frequency. And that's going to be the final angular frequency of that bullet. Now, both objects are going to have the same omega final. So this is pretty straightforward. The angular momentum of the door, again, I'm just gonna write it like this, uh, door, multiplied by omega final, and omega final is the same value. So all we're left with now is we have to evaluate both of these moment of inertias. What's the moment of inertia of the bullet with respect to this axis? What is the moment of inertia of the door relative to that axis? Uh, you can factor out here the um, final value of the angular frequency because that's the same for both of them. So let me just go ahead and factor that out. And that's the quantity we're trying to solve for. And all of this must be equal to this initial angular momentum of the bullet, which is MB VBI multiplied by X. So let's work now at these moment of inertia terms. How do you calculate the moment of inertia of the bullet? Okay, again, it's always calculated relative to this axis, relative to this pivot point. In this case, you just treat it like a point, and the value is simply the mass of the bullet multiplied by the distance to the pivot squared. Okay, so that's the term here. What about the moment of inertia of the door? How do we solve for that guy? Uh, moment of inertia of the door. Now, again, you're considering the door as a rigid object, right? And you're rotating that rigid object about an axis that is located at the end. So for this one here, what you have to do here is look it up in the textbook, but if you have like a rod here that has a certain length D, the moment of inertia, if you rotate it about an axis through the end, is one third the mass of that object, this is the mass of the door, multiplied by the length squared. In this case, it would be the value D squared.
All right, so now we have everything. If you think about all of these terms, I can calculate what the moment of inertia of the bullet is. I can calculate the moment of inertia of the door. So now all we have to do is put everything together in equation two right here, which is the conservation of angular momentum and get our final value for omega. So let's finish off the problem on the next page. So omega f then simply becomes mass of the bullet the initial velocity of the bullet, where does it strike the door? And now I'm going to divide by the total moment of inertia here of the system. So it's the moment of inertia of the bullet. This is mbx squared, plus the moment of inertia of that door. It's one third mass of the door, d squared. Okay, so now all you have to do is substitute in all our values here. So we have 0.01, we have 400, we have 0 0.5 meters for my x value. Uh, go ahead and substitute everything down here again, 0 0.01. Uh, the distance is 0 0.5 squared plus one third. The mass of the door was 15. And the distance here of the length of the door is simply one, so that one squared. Okay, assuming I've done everything correctly, my goodness, so many steps, I get 0 0.4 and this is measured in radians per, oh, per second, not second squared. All right, let's go ahead and highlight this. Actually, I'm going to box that one in red. This is our final answer, right? So everything is rotating at this speed right here. Okay, so the next thing we could consider now is what's going on with the energy in this problem, right? We can look at the initial kinetic energy of the system and compare it now to the final kinetic energy of the system and compare both of those numbers. So what is the initial kinetic energy of the system? Well, initially all we have is that the bullet is moving. So it's simply one half mass of the bullet and that initial speed of the bullet squared. Go ahead and substitute in all the values. We get, convert the mass to kilograms. The speed is 400 squared. That initial kinetic energy of the system is 800 joules. All right, I'm gonna box this one in blue since we're talking about energy now. Compare that now to the final energy of this system. So everything is swinging up. So how would you calculate the final kinetic energy of the system? It is purely rotational energy. So it's one half. It's this total moment of inertia, which is the bullet plus the door. Okay, plus the door. And everything now is rotating at this final omega that I calculated, this 0.4 value. So if I substitute in all the values, okay, I'm gonna do this a little bit quickly. Uh, this one here I did offline and I got a value of 5.0025. And again, this guy, we just calculated 0 0.4. So let me go ahead and do this. The total moment of inertia uh, was this value and my final omega is 0 0.4 squared. Actually, if I calculate what this uh, final kinetic energy is, let's just fix that. My final kinetic energy, I get a number of 0 0.4 joules. So that's incredible, right? We started with 800 joules. And then after this collision, right, we get only 0 0.4. We lost most of the energy because we have an inelastic collision. And there are non-conservative forces acting during this impact. All right, let's go look at case number two now, where the bullet... Uh, emerges with some final speed. All right, how to calculate the final angular velocity now in case number two. The only difference is now we have this bullet that is traveling at 100 meters per second. So it's definitely slowed down, but how do we deal with this? So again, the same principle applies. We have to use the total angular momentum of the system. The angular momentum of the system should be calculated about this axis. Um, in order for the quantity to be conserved. So this is before and after. Let's see what we have. How would we calculate this? So before we have only the angular momentum of the bullet, that's the initial value. And this value we calculated before. It's mass of the bullet, speed of the bullet, initial multiplied by this value x. What do we have after? So after we're going to have this rod. This rod here is going to be rotating like that. Right? So it's going to have some angular momentum. So the final angular momentum of the system has to be the moment of inertia, uh, uh, sorry, the angular momentum final of, um, what do we call it, the door rather, 
Plus, now we also have this bullet, right? This bullet is traveling like that. So in this case here, we have to consider the bullet, the final angular momentum of the bullet. So let's work on both of these terms over here. The way you write down the angular momentum of the door, it's the moment of inertia of the door about that axis up here multiplied by its final angular velocity. And this is really the quantity I'm trying to calculate. Plus, how do you calculate the final angular momentum of this bullet? Again, I'm going to do it very similarly to what I did over here, right? To calculate the initial value. So it's the mass of the bullet. It's the velocity of the bullet, except now I'm taking the final value. And it's we're going to assume that it's still traveling to the right, and it's going to be traveling a distance x away from that pivot. So it's still that same value of x. Now we have to set both of these values equal to each other because angular momentum is conserved in this type of collision if you consider the pivot to be at that point right here. So let's get an expression now, do a little bit of algebra just to get an expression for what is the final value of omega now in this case. So all you have to do is bring this term on the other side. I can factor out a couple terms. The mass of the bullet is going to be the same. This is VB initial minus VB final, and everything gets multiplied by X. And now you must also divide now by the moment of inertia of the door. Uh, I'll just call it I door. Okay, so all we have to do now is, um, again, we could substitute what I door is. Actually, maybe I should just do that right from the beginning. Uh, this guy here was one third. Uh, the mass of the door multiplied by the length of the door squared. Okay, I think we know all the variables here. So all you have to do is substitute in all our numbers to get the final value of omega. So let me go ahead and do that. Mass of the bullet, uh, that initial velocity was 400 minus 100 is the final. That's the exiting speed. Uh, what about x? Uh, x is still my 0 0.5 value divided by one third, mass of the door was 15, and multiplied by d, uh, d was one, so that's one squared. All right, put that in the calculator and I get the final value of omega. In this case, I get a value of 0 0.3, again, radians per second. That is the final value. Let's go ahead and box that. Notice it's a little bit smaller than the previous case, right? You would have expected that because some of the energy now is carried away by this bullet. Let's go ahead and compare those energies again. Uh, that initial kinetic energy, which is only of the bullet, we calculated that, that was 800 joules. That value does not change. Let's calculate now what is our final kinetic energy of the system. So how would I write that? Well, again, now the bullet has some kinetic energy right? So the bullet kinetic energy is just my one half mass of the bullet, the final speed squared. Plus, now we have this door that is also swinging with some angular velocity. So the way that you calculate its kinetic energy, it's all rotational kinetic energy, uh, the moment of inertia of the door multiplied by omega squared. This is my final value of omega. So all we have to do now is substitute in all the values here. So what do we get? Uh, one half, uh, 0.01. Uh, this final velocity was 100 squared plus one half. Uh, moment of inertia of the door. Uh, this guy we've calculated. Um, again, it's just one third 15 times one. So that ends up giving you five. Uh, what else? Uh, multiplied by the final angular velocity. That's this value we just calculated, 0 0.3 squared. All right, so we put everything in the calculator. You get that the final kinetic energy of the system here is approximately 50 point, I don't know, 225 joules. All right, go ahead and box that. So again, if you compare it in this case, so first of all, these values are not the same, right? Energy is not conserved because we have an inelastic collision. Now notice there is not as much loss as the previous case, right? The previous case, we had only had 0.4 joules after. Now, because we haven't lost as much energy due to uh, some of these non-conservative forces that are acting to slow down the bullet. Okay, but it's still an inelastic collision. All right, that's it for me, folks. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you uh, learned something from this video.